Lawfare, Part 2, Presidential Immunity. Imagine what we can do next. Four more years. Pause. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Oh, my God. Four more years. Pause. Pause. I was fascinated by this exchange between Justice Brett Kavanaugh questioning DOJ lawyer Michael Drebin about the need to deny Trump presidential immunity. But President Reagan's administration, President Bush's administration, President Clinton's administration were really uh, hampered, yes. uh, in their view, mm-hmm. all three, by the uh, independent counsel structure. And, and what I, I'm worried about here is that that was kind of, let's relax Article 2 a bit for the needs of the moment. And I'm worried about the similar kind of uh, situation applying here. That was a prosecutor investigating a president in each of those circumstances, and someone picked from the opposite party, the current president, uh, and uh, usually uh, was how it worked. And, and Justice Scalia wrote that the, the fairness of a process must be adjudged on the basis of what it permits to happen, Mm -hmm. not what it produced in a particular case. You've emphasized uh, many times regularity, the Department of Mm -hmm. Justice. And and he said, uh, and I think this applied to the independent counsel system, and it could apply if presidents are routinely subject to investigation going forward. One thing is certain, however, it involves investigating and perhaps prosecuting a particular individual. Can one imagine a less equitable manner of fulfilling the executive responsibility to investigate and prosecute? What would the reaction be if, in an area not covered by the statute, the Justice Department posted a public notice inviting applicants to assist in an investigation and possible prosecution of a certain prominent person? Does this not invite what Justice Jackson described as picking the man and then searching the law books or putting investigators to work to pin some offense on him? To be sure, the investigation must relate to the area of criminal offense specified by the statute, uh, but that has often been, and nothing prevents it from being uh, very broad. I paraphrased at the end because it was referring to the judges. Yes. Um, that's the concern going forward: is that the the system will, when when former presidents are subject to prosecution, and the history of Morrison versus Olson tells us it's not going to stop. It's going to it's going to cycle back and be used against the current president or the next president or and the next president and the next president after that. All that, I want you to try to allay that concern. Why is this not Morrison v. Olson redux if we agree with you? Well, uh, first of all, the, the independent counsel regime did have many structural features that emphasized an independence at the expense of accountability. We don't have that regime now, but even under that regime, Justice Kavanaugh, I think if you look at Lawrence Walsh's report on Iran-Contra, I think this goes to a very fundamental point for the court to consider. Uh, uh, Judge Walsh said, I investigated these matters, the proof did not nearly come close to establishing criminal violations. Well, I think President Reagan, President Bush, and President Clinton, whether rightly or wrongly, thought opposite, thought contrary to what you just said. I think nobody likes being investigated for a crime, but it didn't result in the kind of vindictive prosecutions that I, I think Your Honor is, is raising as a possibility. Yeah. We, we have a different system now. I think there was a consensus throughout Washington that there were flaws in the independent counsel system. It lapsed. We now are inside the Justice Department with full accountability resting with the Attorney General. So the special counsel regulations now don't operate the way that the independent counsel regulations do. And I, this court would have something to say about it, I think, if uh, the independent counsel statute were revived. I'm not sure that anybody is in favor of that. So what did you hear in Draven's long answer there? That the DOJ's current prosecutions of Donald Trump under special counsel Jack Smith would not affect the current president, Joe Biden, or future presidents. Why? Because those people are not Trump. Uh, second, uh, another point, you said, um, uh, uh, talked about the criminal statutes. It's very easy to characterize presidential actions as false or misleading under vague statutes. So. Um, uh, President Lyndon Johnson statements about the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. 
say something's false, uh, turns out to be false, that he says about the Vietnam War. 371 prosecution? So after he leaves office, I think not. But I, we need, this is an area that I do think that merits some serious and nuanced consideration. Statements that are made by a president uh, to the public are not really coming within the realm of criminal statutes. They've never been prosecuted. I realize that the court can say, well, what if they were? And, and then I think you get to what I would regard as a hard constitutional question that would probably guide the court away from trying to resolve today, although I do think it's very different from our case and distinguishable in important ways. But you're dealing here with two branches of government that have a paramount interest in the integrity and freedom of their interactions with each other. On the one hand, the president, of course, should be very free to send usually his uh, uh, cabinet officials and sub-cabinet officials to testify to Congress to provide them with the information needed to enact legislation and to make national policy. And we're very concerned about anything that would trammel that. On the other side of the equation, Congress has a compelling interest in receiving accurate information and at the very least, I, I not agree. information that is intentionally and knowingly false. Right. That would pollute the legislation. You don't have to be a lawyer to get the drift of the DOJ's answers here before the Supreme Court. Uh, you, I think it came up before. President Ford's pardon. Mm -hmm. uh, very controversial in the moment. Yes. Hugely unpopular, probably why he lost in 76. Yes. Uh, now looked upon as one of the better decisions in presidential history, I think by most people. Um, if he's thinking about well, if I grant this pardon to Richard Nixon, could I be investigated myself for obstruction of justice on the theory that I'm interfering with the investigation of Richard Nixon? So this would fall into that small core area that I mentioned to Justice Kagan and Justice Gorsuch of uh, presidential responsibilities that Congress cannot regulate. How about President Obama's drone strikes? So the, the Office of Legal Counsel looked at this very carefully and determined that, number one, the federal murder statute does apply to the executive branch. The president wasn't personally carrying out the strike, but the aiding and abetting laws are broad. And it determined that a public authority uh, exception that's built into statutes and that applied particularly to the murder statute because it talks about unlawful killing did not apply to the drone strike. So this is actually the way that the system should function. The Department of Justice takes criminal law very seriously. It runs it through the analysis very carefully with established principles. It documents them, it explains them, and then the president can go forward in accordance with it. And there is no risk of prosecution for that course of activity. Thank you for your answers. A peculiar explanation for why the DOJ's multiple prosecutions of Donald Trump could not possibly happen with other presidents. So the answer every time from Biden's lawyers is that they are prosecuting Donald Trump because Trump. Because Trump is not a legal argument. I'd like to close with a discussion on Larry Kudlow's show about Nixon v. Fitzgerald. Or that I am. Nixon versus Fitzgerald gave presidential immunity in civil cases, but this one is a criminal case but many people think that the criminal case should be included in presidential yeah. immunity or whatever the term is, the outer limits of immunity, because otherwise presidents are not going to be able to operate as presidents because they may all either go to jail or be in court after they leave the White House, as they're doing to Trump. What's your read, Greg Jarrett? Yeah, it appears most justices are willing to grant some kind of immunity, Larry. They spoke, as you point out, a great deal about Nixon v. Fitzgerald, a 1982 case that did give presidents immunity from civil lawsuits as long as their actions fall, quote, uh, on the outer perimeter of official duties. The president has absolute immunity from liability for civil damages arising from any official action taken while in office. Certain officials, such as judges, because of the special nature of their responsibilities, require absolute exemption from liability. Folks, this is exactly why every president enjoys presidential immunity. It's clear that in the persons of partisans like Merrick Garland, Jack Smith, and Michael Dribben, these Democrat lawyers cannot be entrusted with equal justice under law. 
Thank you.